Our built heritage often conveys a sense of timelessness, with signs of degradation often being seen as a romantic patina hinting at their age. Yet, given time and water, materials degrade, and even materials that may seem as permanent as stone suffer from weathering. This video is the first in a series dedicated to the degradation of porous building materials such as stone, brick, wood, adobe and concrete. It provides a brief overview of the main degradation mechanisms highlighting the critical role of water. Virtually all degradation mechanisms require the presence of water. It may act as a solvent, especially for carbonate stones, which are particularly vulnerable to acid rain. Water also enables repeated dissolution and precipitation of salts, which can lead to damaging stresses in porous materials. This is one of the main degradation mechanisms for brick and stone buildings, as discussed in the related videos. Concerning freezing, a bottle forgotten in the freezer will burst from the volume change as water converts to ice. In building materials, water is rarely trapped in that way, but the growth of ice crystals can create stress, just as salt crystals do. Separate videos discuss the damage mechanisms that can be driven by freezing, as well as the means of mitigating it at the material scale. Wetting or changes of humidity cause wood to swell and shrink, which is typically the cause of cracks that one sees on timber elements or wood boards. Similarly, clays in earthen materials and in some stones swell when wet and shrink upon drying, which may cause cracking. Finally, moisture can promote the development of microorganisms and or fungi, which is another important issue for wood. Biota can also be very harmful to wall paintings because even minor material loss or color changes can compromise the quality and readability of a pictorial layer. A critical issue in building conservation is preventing penetration of water, so maintenance of roofing and gutters is essential. A special case concerns the top of pinnacles and flying buttresses that are directly exposed to vertical rain. For such elements, it is advisable to select stones with low sorptivity so that water will run off rather than being absorbed. The geometry of carved stone elements, such as gargoyles, can lead runoff water away from the building. Their efficiency is however intimately dependent on geometrical details and must be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Wind-driven rain may strike facades. On porous facades, this rain is initially absorbed at a rate dictated by the material sorptivity. As detailed in a separate video, the rate of this sorption decreases with time so that less water penetrates and more runs off the facade as the rain continues. Another way for water to directly reach facades is through aerosols and fogs. Cyclic exposure to water, followed by drying periods, can lead to subsurface accumulation of water in building materials. Such permanently wet zones are believed to be detrimental to the durability of building materials. Water rises from the ground into porous materials through capillary suction. We previously showed that gravity sets a maximum height of rise that increases with decreasing pore sizes. In buildings, water usually evaporates before it reaches the maximum height, a topic that we will address in relation to salt damage. In the case of masonry structures, there is an alternation of mortar, 
with bricks or stone blocks that have very different transport coefficients. Therefore, simple equations for rates of capillary rise are not quantitative, but they do indicate trends qualitatively. You are certainly familiar with water condensing on cold surfaces, such as a car windshield on a cold night. In hydrophilic porous materials, liquid water can form by capillary condensation when temperature drops and or humidity rises. This is driven by the attraction felt by water molecules for the inner surface of such materials as detailed in the related video. Finally, the presence of soluble salts can cause water from the air to condense and form a salt solution that will only dry out at lower humidity, often well below 100%. A beneficial application of this principle is the use of calcium chloride to desiccate humid rooms. For monuments, hygroscopic salts are unfortunately detrimental. Humidity changes can lead to cyclic dissolution and crystallization of such salts that may damage porous materials over time or harbor microorganisms and or fungi, which can be problematic on wall paintings. In conclusion, water reaches buildings in various ways and can contribute to the worst degradation suffered by building materials, including stone, brick, wood, adobe and concrete. Proper water management is therefore an important aspect of the preventive conservation of built heritage. This requires a deeper understanding of the degradation mechanisms at stake and it is the objective of our following videos to examine those questions in more detail.